Good evening. I'm Alan Joins, Mayor of Winston-Salem. It's my honour to call to order this uh, June 2nd, uh, 6th meeting of the Winston-Salem City Council. And I would ask the City Clerk to call the roll, please. Councilmember Larson. Present. Councilmember Clark. Here. Councilmember Mundy. Present. Councilmember Scipio. Present. Mayor Pro Tem Adams. Here. Councilmember Taylor. Present. Councilmember McIntosh. Here. Councilmember Burke. Here. Thank you very much. Would you please join the City Council and me in a moment of silence? Thank you, and would you please join the City Council and me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. I'd like to recognize our Sergeant at Arms tonight, Lieutenant Kevin Burns. Lieutenant, thank you for being with us tonight. Uh, folks, we have an uh, agenda tonight uh, comprised of 10 uh, zoning uh, petitions. It's an item related to the Energy Innovation and Carbon Dividend Act of 2021, and as well as an item related to boards and commissions. When the zoning petitions are called, uh, the public uh, will be given an opportunity to speak. If no one uh, wishes to speak, I'll close the public uh, hearing and the city council will consider the item. If there's opposition to the zoning petitions, the proponents and the opponents will each be given 15 minutes for presentation and three minutes for rebuttal. Uh, the meeting is being televised live tonight on TV 13 and it will be replayed on Tuesday at 9 a.m. and again Wednesday at 9 p.m. Copies of the agenda as well as videos of our previous meetings are always available online at the city's website and just click on the watch meetings online option. Council members, it's my understanding that uh, Council Member Mundy and Council Member Larson would like to continue items Z2 and Z10 respectively. So I would entertain a motion from one of you gentlemen uh, to do that. Can, can we do Mundy? both? Yeah, we'll do them both. Yeah. Uh, I move that we continue uh, Z2 and Z10, which is W3529 and uh, 220297 uh, until our next zoning meeting on Tuesday, August the 2nd. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Second. Thank you. We do have a motion to uh, continue. And uh, City Clerk, can we, you can bring that up? Okay. So would you please uh, vote for this item when it comes up? A yes vote. We'll continue both of these items. And that's unanimous. Both of these items will be continued to August the 2nd. Item Z1, please. Item Z1, continuation of public hearing on zoning petition of 1520 Dune Street for reasonable accommodation. This item was continued from the November 4th, 2019, January 6, 2020, June 1st, 2020, March 1st, 2021, February 2nd, 2022, and May 2nd, 2022 city council meetings. A request to withdraw has been received for this item. Thank you. We've been looking at this for a good while. I would recognize uh, Councilmember Larson if you'd like to make a motion to allow this to be withdrawn. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mayor Pro Tem, I move the approval of the withdrawal request from Oxford House. Second. second. Motion second. Any discussion? Not. Please uh, vote when this comes before you. Uh, yes, if you're in favor. No, of course, if you're against it. And that is unanimous. Thank you very much. We'll now go to Z3. Item Z3, continuation of public hearing on zoning petition of David and Jan Properties, LLC, from RS9 to <coughs> RS20-S. Property is located on the west side of South Peace Haven Road, south of Foxdale Drive, located in the West Ward. Planning Board recommends approval of petition. This item was continued from the May 2nd, 2022 City Council meeting. Thank you. This is a public hearing. Is there anyone in the Council Chamber who is opposed to this rezoning? I know the petitioner is here. If there are any questions? Seeing no opposition, I will close the public hearing then and I'll recognize Councilmember Clark. I would like a presentation, but I do want to apologize. I continued it because I had COVID and even, even though the symptoms were mild, I did not want to jeopardize anyone here. So that's well, why. Thank I you, Mr. Clark. So with that, if the staff could Mr. please Murphy. give us a presentation. Mr. 
Good evening, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, City Council. Uh, this is a, a request, it's W3523 for David and Jan Properties to rezone a 9.94 acre uh, property uh, located on the west side of South P Peace Haven Road, uh, just south of Foxdale Drive, located in the West Ward from RS9 to RS20S. Here is the subject property shown on the Legacy Growth Management Area Plan map. It's located in the suburban neighborhood's GMA3 Growth Management Area. Uh, this is the location map uh, shown, highlighted in yellow. You'll see that there is an extensive amount of uh, floodplain associated with this parcel. Uh, this is, again, the subject property outlined in yellow shown on the countywide uh, aerial photos. Uh, this is looking uh, along South Peace Haven Road, looking north uh, from the subject property. The subject property is to the left. And this is looking south along Peace Haven Road. The subject property would be to the right. This is looking into the subject property from the existing access point, um, <coughs> looking west towards where the activity area would be. And this is looking at the existing neighborhood on Foxdale Drive to the north of the subject property. Again, this is a, from South Peace Haven Road looking west into the subject property from the access road that you just saw an image or two earlier. And this is approximately where the zoning line is located, where that silt fence is in the foreground of the image, uh, looking west. The, the petitioners own that parcel as well, but it is not being proposed for rezoning. This is a partial lot rezoning request. And this is on the subject property looking east back up to South Peace Haven Road. You see a pond in the foreground. You see that access road uh, and looking back up at Peace Haven Road on top of the hill. And this is a view of the chapel that's uh, already uh, under construction as a accessory structure to uh, the uh, property. <coughs> this is looking southwest. This is the area plan map uh, from the Southwest Suburban Area Plan update. Uh, it's recommending residential land use of the property and the rezoning uh, petition is consistent with that request. Uh, this is the site plan. They are looking to do an event, special event center in the RS20S zoning uh, request uh, with the request. And this is the site plan, uh, shows the access road, some parking, the chapel that's under construction, a uh, pavilion area, uh, as well as a, a porch area and a maintenance building for this proposed event center. Uh, in uh, analyzing this, uh, staff and the plan board felt that the Less intense uses would be allowed on land that is within a floodplain and unsuitable for residential development. The proposed development would allow for the preservation of the natural features, large canopy trees, and environmentally sensitive areas. The proposed site plan does show existing and proposed development away from the adjacent residential properties. This was heard by the planning board at their April 14th, 2022 public hearing. There was one speaker in opposition and their primary opposition dealt with concerns with traffic, the, the number of events possible, the impact to their property values and their ability to enjoy their own property. Hearing that, the planning board did uh, vote four to two to recommend approval of this request to the planning board and the uh, site plan does meet UDO requirements. And with that, I'll be glad to answer any questions. Any questions for Mr. Murphy? Thank you. Customer Clark. Yeah, uh, I'll make a motion of this a second. I'll make a few comments. I move for approval of one, the statement of consistency for the approval of this item, and two, W3523. Second. Motion okay. to second. Uh, Customer this Clark. is a strange little thing on the very, very back side of this property in a floodplain. The guy wants to build a little chapel and a, I guess, a place to have the reception. I felt like it was far enough out of the way it would not cause disruption to anybody, and that's why. I, moved in favor of it. Thank you. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor, please uh, vote to aye, and anyone opposed, vote no. And that is unanimous. Thank you, Customer Clark. Item Z4. Item Z4, public hearing on zoning petition of Andrew Coney and Becky Coney from GB to LI-L. Property is located on the northern terminus of Back 40 Drive on the west side of US 52, located in the southeast ward. Planning board recommends approval of petition. Thank you. Is there anyone in the council chamber who is opposed to this rezoning? Uh, again, the petitioner is here for any questions. Seeing no one, I'll declare the public hearing closed. I recognize Councilmember Taylor. Thank you, Mayor. I move for approval of one, the statement of consistency for approval of this item, and two, W-3520. Second. 
there a second any further discussion if not all those in favor please vote aye anyone opposed vote no please and that is unanimous thank you councilman taylor thank you item z5 Item Z5, public hearing on zoning petition of Riverfront Ventures, LLC, from RS20 to RS9. Property is located on the east side of Bethania Tobaccoville Road, south of Kilby Road, located in the North Ward. Planning Board recommends approval petition. Thank you. Is there anyone in the council chamber who is opposed to this rezoning? Right. Seeing no one, I'll declare the public hearing closed, and I'll recognize Mayor Pro Tem Adams. Thank you, Mayor. I move for approval of one, the statement of consistency for approval of this item, and two, W3524. <coughs> second. Motion second. Any further discussion? If not, please vote uh, aye if you're in favor of this and no if you're opposed. And that is unanimous. Thank you very much. Item Z6. Item Z6, public hearing on zoning petition of J&K Property Management, LLC, from RS9 to LI-L. Property is located on the north side of Kester Mill Road, west of Tanton Park Drive, located in the southwest ward. Planning Board recommends approval of petition. We do have uh, someone signed up in opposition to this, so we will hold the public hearing. Uh, for the proponents, I'd recognize Joe Folk. Yes, if you'd come forward, if you state your name and address for the record, please, then you would have 15 minutes, Mr. Falk. My name is Joe Falk. I live at 1989 Landover Drive in Clemens. Uh, I think Ms. Cox is going to speak, and I've, I've met with her and her family on several occasions. I'm very sympathetic to their situation. They're in an area that is growing, uh, and it's, uh, it meets the Legacy 2030 plan. I think the planning board did vote for approval. Their concern mainly is the buffer between the building and their property, and I'm committed to, uh, it's a type three buffer in a 20 foot area, and I'm committing to, to help them if, it, if additional plannings are needed. We've made kind of a verbal agreement to do that. <coughs> We would, uh, if, if you had made an agreement to add additional uh, buffering, we would need for you to, uh, when Mr. Murphy will bring it up, we might need you to come back and verify that. Anyone else for the proponents? All right, thank you. We'll now go to the opponents. Uh, Andrea Cox. Um, my name is Andrea Cox and I live at 4773 Kester Mill Road. My property and my mother's property butts directly up next to this rezoning. So we are in an RS9. It's going to be a light industrial. Uh, I'm here speaking on her behalf, my behalf, and a neighbor's behalf who lives across the street. Um, we're not necessarily here in opposition. We have been through this many times. Our road was once a little country dirt road, and now it's got an industrial park with 18 wheelers and all kinds of stuff going up and down it. So, you know, I know it's the city's plan to make it industrial on my side of the road. And so I've pretty much given in to that, but I am where I am. And it's been in my family for six generations, not going anywhere unless somebody offers me enough money to move. <laughs> and I would move, trust me, if they did. Um, but again, I'm not here to oppose it. I'm just here to stress the importance of a good buffer. This is going to come up right next to my back door. And I would just ask that you would put in a good buffer that would minimize any encroachment on my property. Um, it's my understanding that it was originally a 30-foot buffer. It's being cut down to a 20-foot type 3 buffer yard with double the plantings, plantings. And we're in agreement with that. I've talked to Joe, and Joe's been very nice and very open with us. And uh, we're in agreement with, you know, if they're going to double the plantings, um, that it can go down to a 20-foot buffer um, as long as it creates a sufficient, you know, border. Um, I've also been in communications with Joe about what type of plantings. I know that there are some that are less disease prone and that grow faster. And he has assured me that he would work with me um, and the others to plant what might be considered uh, green giant arbor arborvitaes. Um, I think they're less prone to disease and they grow faster. Um, 
our experience on the road is that people don't always say, do what they say they're gonna do. Uh, we had a developer who put in a nice big industrial park and we had to come back to you guys and make him put in the buffer. So I'm here really just to state <laughs> the facts that we want the buffer yard in, we want what they say they're gonna put in, and um, you know, just don't make any additional changes, don't try to back out, just, you know, keep in mind this is still our house and this is still our home. So, you know, <clears throat> I just can't reiterate that enough. Put yourself in my position and just enforce what's what's out there. I mean, I, I don't know what this type three buffer yard is, but I trust that it'll be sufficient. Um, and I would just also like to ask, because my mom's been asking, what happens if the plants die? <laughs> um, you know, because we've had, like I said, so many industrial things go up around here, and we've seen other buffers that have just like been planted, nobody waters them, and the trees die, and then there's no buffer. So I don't know how that works, but that was a concern of one of the, the property owners. So I think that's pretty much sums it up. Thank you, Ms. Cox. Anyone else for the opposition? All right. Um, Mr. Falk, you would have three minutes for rebuttal if you wanted to rebut anything or add anything. I just want to clarify something. I didn't mean I was going to do an additional buffer. I was going to add to the plantings that were required. As, as she right. stated, I misstated. But it is... And when we went before the planning board, the 30 was supposed to be a 20. The planning board didn't have it right. So, and, and they corrected it to come to before y'all tonight. Mm -hmm. But that's what happened. It was a 20 foot with a type three double planting. Double planting. It doesn't affect the, where the building, the building has to be the same distance as from residential, it's 40 feet. So it doesn't affect where the building goes at all. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Falk. Ms. Cox, would you like to add anything on a rebuttal? No, I mean, that's my okay. Well. okay, thank you. All right, I would ask Ms. Murphy to give the report of the planning board, please. Good evening again, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem and the Council. Uh, yes, this is a request of J&K Property Management LLC to rezone a 1.19 acre tract along Kester Mill Road from RS9 to LIL. Uh, here is the subject property shown on the Legacy Growth Management Area map in uh, GMA3 suburban neighborhoods. Uh, this is the subject property highlighted in yellow. Again, they're shown uh, along Kester Mill Road in between uh, industrial property and residential property. There's a little wedge of residential uh, there in between commercial uh, and the existing industrial. This is the subject property highlighted in yellow shown on the uh, countywide aerial photos. This is looking at the subject property standing on Kester Mill Road. And this is looking east along Kester Mill Road back towards uh, Jonestown Road. And this is standing uh, in Kester Mill Road looking west uh, along Kester Mill Road and the industrial development would be further um, down the road here. Uh, this is the subject property shown on the Southwest Suburban Area Plan. Uh, it's recommended for industrial development for the entire area. Uh, the request is consistent with the recommendations of Legacy and the Southwest Suburban Area Plan. The proposed zoning is a good transition from GI zoning in the west to the HB zoning in the east. And the request proposes additional vegetative screening to mitigate visual impacts to Kester Mill Road and the neighboring residential properties. The permit that's in front of you, well, let me go. The, the heard by the planning board at their May 12th, 2022 public hearing, there were no speakers in opposition at that meeting, although uh, the, the uh, person who was in opposition was at that meeting but had not signed up to speak in opposition. The planning board did recommend 9-0 for approval of the request. Uh, in the permit, there are two conditions of approval. One is for a 20-foot wide type three buffer with double the plantings prescribed in the ordinance. And there's a second condition of approval that uh, requires a street yard to be installed along the subject property um, with a type two buffer yard, I believe. 
It's a 20 foot street yard uh, planted with 20 foot type three buffer yard plantings along with a three foot tall berm. Um, <clears throat> just to give you an idea for a 20 foot wide buffer yard, the normal planting rate per 100 linear feet is, uh, would be two deciduous trees, 18 primary evergreens such as Nellie Stevens Holly, you know, something that will become a large uh, visual buffer, and then 12 supplemental evergreen shrubs um, per 100 linear feet. So they have agreed to do four uh, deciduous trees, 36 primary evergreen, and 24 shrubs per 100 linear feet along that property line to the east, and then do a uh, type three buffer yard as their street yard along Kester Mill Road to try to kind of screen the impacts of the proposed future industrial development. So with, with that, I'll be glad to answer any questions. Oh, Chris, would you comment on the question about maintenance of the uh, shrubbery? Yes, uh, whenever any time any type of uh, vegetation is installed for a requirement, whether it be for a rezoning action or whether it be for uh, standard approvals through our office for uh, development permits, any of that vegetation that dies, they just need to contact our office in planning. Our zoning enforcement staff will take a look at that. And if uh, those trees are required and they have uh, died, then they will have to be replaced. Have to be replaced. All right, thank you. Um, any questions of Mr. Murphy? I do at, need to close the public hearing while I'm thinking about it as well. Uh, Councilman Scipio. Who, at whose expense are those uh, shrubs and trees replaced? That would be a contractual agreement between, you know, again, sometimes it really depends on what the lease says. Ultimately, it's the responsibility of the property owner. Now, they, they may have something in their lease if, if someone, if it's a ground lease and someone is, is leasing that space from them, there may be something in their contract that says they have to do that. But ultimately, in our eyes, it falls on the property owner. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Uh, Mundy, recognize you. It sounds like all of your concerns have been met. Um, and, and written down so that it's not just a verbal agreement. So given that, I would move for approval of one, the statement of consistency for approval of this item, and two, W3525. There's a second. 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 Thank you, any discussion, further discussion? If not, all those in favor, please vote aye, and anyone opposed, vote no. And that is unanimous. Thank you, Councilman Mundy. Go to item Z7, please. Item Z7, public hearing on zoning petition of William Harrison from NB-S to MB-L. Property is located on the north side of Olds Green Greensboro Road, west of Waterworks Road, located in the East Ward. Planning Board recommends approval of petition. Thank you. Is there anyone in the council chamber who is opposed to this rezoning? No, the uh, proponent is here. Proponents are here. If there are any questions? I'll close the uh, public hearing and I'd recognize Councilor Mercipio. Yes, I move for approval of the, one, the statement of consistency for approval of this item, and two, W-3526. Second. Excuse me, Mr. Mayor, I think a person had their, did you have your hand up in the red? No. 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 Okay. All right, Council Member Mercipio has made a motion. Is there a second? Second. Yeah. Thank you. Any further discussion? All right, all those in favor, please vote yes. Anyone opposed, vote no. And that is unanimous. Thank you, Councilman Scipio. Item Z8. Item Z8, public hearing on zone petition of Harvest Landing, LLC, from LO to PB-L, properties located on the west side of South Spruce Street, north of Salem Parkway, located in the northwest ward. Planning board recommends approval of petition. Thank you. Is there anyone in the council chamber who is opposed to this rezoning? The petitioner is here. If there are any questions, uh, yes, you're opposed to it. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much. All right. Seeing no opposition, I will close the public hearing. I recognize Councilmember McIntosh. I move for approval of one statement of consistency for approval of this, of this item and two W three five three zero. Second. Motion second. Any <coughs> further discussion of this item? All right. Those in favor, please vote yes. Anyone opposed, vote no. <coughs> Has everybody voted? Mm -hmm. There it is. That's unanimous. Thank you very much. Go to item Z9, please. 
Item Z9, public hearing on special use permit of Lead Estate LLC for a parking reduction for a restaurant without drive-through service in the growth management area. Property is located on the, on the southwest side of Brookstown Avenue, south, southeast of Bur Burke Street, located in the northwest ward. Planning Board recommends approval petition. Thank you. This is a public hearing regarding the petitioner's application for a parking reduction for a restaurant without drive-through service in the growth management area two. The process for issuing a special use permit is quasi-judicial. Speakers must present testimony and evidence under oath. Speakers should rely on their own information and not base their remarks on what someone else said or knows. The applicant and other witnesses have the right to ask questions of each other, and all testimony and evidence must relate to the four findings of fact that the council must make. All testament, testimony and evidence must relate to the special use permit requested. As it relates to the quasi-judicial hearings, the council is prohibiting from considering opinion testimony from non-expert witnesses, and particularly testimony as how the proposed use would impact the value of neighboring properties. Additionally, council must only consider evidence provided at the hearing. Communications with members of the city council outside of the hearing are prohibited and must be disclosed, if any. The four findings of fact are shown on the screen now, and uh, the process also requires the council to issue a special use permit only when it's able to make an affirmative finding as to each of the four findings. The applicant has the burden of proof as to the second and third finding. The opposition has the burden of proof with respect to the first and fourth findings. So I'd ask anyone who wishes to speak or intends to speak on this item, please come forward so we can swear you in. Thank you. Um, is there anyone in opposition to this special use permit? All right. Seeing no one, I'll declare the uh, public hearing closed, and I would recognize Councilmember McIntosh. Should I ask for a report first? Sure, absolutely. Yeah. Mr. Murphy, could you give us a report of the planning board? And Mayor, since he's under oath, let him go ahead and testify with the public hearing open and close it after he finishes. I'm sorry. My... Say again. Can... Have Mr. Murphy, since he's testifying under oath, testify during the public hearing, and you can close the public hearing right. after he testifies. We'll leave the public hearing open until Mr. Murphy gives his brilliant testimony. Thank you again, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, and Council. Uh, this is a uh, request uh, for a parking uh, reduction for a 0.28 acre property on the southwest side of Brookstown Avenue, southeast of Burke Street, located in the northwest ward. Here is the subject property uh, shown on the Legacy Growth Management Area Plan map in GMA2 Urban Neighborhoods. Here's the subject property highlighted in yellow. Uh, as you can tell, part of the property appears to be vacant and there is a building that is on part of the parcel as well. They're located along Brookstown, uh, just to the southeast of Burke Street. Uh, this is the subject property outlined in yellow on the uh, countywide aerial photo, uh, photography image. Again, you can see the development uh, that's take, that has taken place in the area. And again, this is primarily a developed parcel with an existing building and parking slash uh, drive aisle area uh, on the parcel, very narrow parcel. This is the subject property looking southwest from Brookstown Avenue. Real narrow building and basically a drive aisle to go from the rear back out to Brookstown vice versa. Uh, this is looking northwest of Brookstown Avenue, the subject property to the left. Uh, this is looking southeast down Brookstown Avenue. Again, the subject property will be to the right in this image. Uh, this is looking northeast across the subject property across Brookstown Avenue at the uh, recently constructed residential building uh, there. <clears throat> This is looking north at the rear and side of the subject property. Uh, the, the image, uh, the uh, light block image is the subject property. That's the building and that's the access aisle that comes up from the rear up to Brookstown. And this is looking northwest up the alley from the rear of the subject property. The subject property is just to the right. That's the building. That's looking back up to Burke Street. So you enter from Burke Street, come down and then take a left and enter by uh, exit onto Brookstown. And this is just looking southeast uh, from the back side of the building to the property line. 
This is the area plan map. Uh, it is uh, identified as office and commercial uh, in the Burke Street, Brookstown area from the South Central Winston Salem area plan update. Uh, this is the site plan that was submitted as part of the request. You can see the existing building shown in green. They can provide uh, four parking spaces in the rear, uh, but the remainder of the site is essentially tied up in access and there isn't any additional area to provide any additional parking. The City Council findings, um, the first finding that the use will not materially endanger the public health or safety if located where proposed and developed according to the application and plan as submitted and approved. Under staff findings, the proposed use restaurant without drive-through service is not a threat to the public health or safety. There are numerous other restaurants within the 4th Burke Activity Center area. Further, no expansion to the existing building is proposed. Just as an aside, Council has approved um, generally um, I believe all of these requests in the area that deal with parking reductions. Second uh, finding is that the use meets all required conditions and specifications to the extent possible. The site is compliant with all UDO requirements. This permit is necessary because the proposed use makes the site ineligible for an exemption granted to other non-residential buildings in the same area. The site does have access to four off-street parking spaces. Just as a little bit of additional context to that finding, uh, all uh, uses, all commercial uses in commercial structures that were built prior to 1988 do not have to meet the parking requirement except for the use restaurant and for the use um, sweepstakes. So in this case, since they are proposing a restaurant, they have to meet uh, the parking requirement or seek a parking reduction through the special use permit process. Under finding three, that the use will not substantially injure the value of adjoining or abutting property or, the, or that the use is a public necessity. Uh, planning staff is not qualified to have uh, the expertise to make property value determinations. So uh, we make no finding there. Uh, so you would have to utilize other testimony to uh, have a finding uh, that it fails um, that finding. And then finally, fourth, that the location and character of the use that developed according to the, uh, according to the application and plan submitted and approved will be in harmony with the area in which it is to be located and in general conformity with Legacy 2030. Legacy 2030 recommends concentrating development within established commercial areas and for the adaptive reuse of, ex uh, of vacant or um, underutilized non-residential structures. The proposed project accomplishes these recommendations. In summary, the request would reuse, reuse the existing building with no expansion proposed. Because the proposed use is restaurant without drive-through service, it is not eligible for the parking exemption pertaining to changes of use in GMAs 1 and 2. The, ex the existing structure was built in 1955. The site is very narrow and has limited off-street parking in the rear, which is accessed by an alley. Otherwise, the site is compliant with all UDO requirements. At their May 12, 2022 meeting, the planning board recommended approval of the site plan and uh, staff recommends approval of the special use permit. And with that, I'll be glad to answer any questions. Any questions for Mr. Murphy? Uh, Councilmember Scipio? Yes, Mr. Murphy. Um, when we looked at the pictures in the alley or the, looks like uh, where you drive from Brookstown to Burke Street, is that where people would be parking or not? Yeah. If, if you look at that image there, coming from Burke Street towards the subject property, you know, there are some, there's some parking available to some of the other properties along there. When you get to the subject property, which is approximately where that arrow is. Yes. Um, oops, I'm going the wrong way. Essentially, those looking south right there, looking at those are the four parking spaces that are available on the site. And that's it. So driving into that, none of that driveway would be available for any parking? Correct, due to the narrowness of it. Because of the, okay. All right. Thank you very much, and I will now close one, the public hearing. I'm sorry, thank one you. more oh, question. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Murray. Pardon me. I know that there is a, a good bit of on-street parking on Burke Street, which is very clearly within walking distance, but um, is there, this, this face is Brookstown, is that right? Correct. Is there any on-street parking on Brookstown? 
I don't believe so. I, I believe Aaron might have the aerial photo pulled up. There is, but not on the subject property side of the street. It's okay. on the opposite side okay. of the street. But I mean, there would be some available, but you can't commit it to them. Okay. So. And and then um, in in conjunction with um, what's on Burke Street, I think we're good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Councilmember. All right. Thank you very much. Um, again, I, I have closed the public hearing, and I'll recognize Councilmember McIntosh. Sure. I'd like to make a motion and then um, a remark after yes, the vote. Please. I move based on the staff report, testimony, and evidence presented at the public hearing that one, the City Council affirm the four findings as required by Section 3-2.13E6A of the Unified Development Ordinances. Two, the City Council approve the site plan that is included with this special use permit request along with the conditions included in the special use permit and staff report. And three, the City Council issue a special use permit for Lead State LLC for parking reduction for a restaurant without drive through service and growth management area, too. Second. Motion and second. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor, please vote yes. And anyone opposed, vote no. And that is unanimous. Thank you, Councilman McIntosh. So we now go to I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Remarking on a question. So sorry. the concerns about parking, I think this is an air, this is an instance where we're giving the public what they're asking for, which is a, a public or not a public, but a but a walkable amenity um, within a frisbee throw of this place are going to be roughly 800 housing units and plus overflow from the ballpark. So when we're looking at things for places for people to eat that live there, um, this is going to this is not going to be drive to people are not going to be get, getting in their cars and driving to it unless they're already downtown for some other type of a thing. So that's, I think this is a huge amenity and I think it'll it'll do very well in that location. The second thing is a question that I'd like council to think about. This is the third time that one of these special use restaurant things have come up since I've been on council in nine years. They've all been in my ward. <laughs> and we sit here and we have very little leeway from which to judge. Staff brings us these essentially buttoned up, ready to go. We have questions around them, but essentially we really don't have the ability to question the, the legal standing of the, of, the, you know, of the responses. I'd like to hear from um, city attorney whether we could make this a staff approval um, versus a special use process. I think that is allowable and it's certainly something we could uh, consider and bring back in terms of a text amendment. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman McIntosh. All right, we'll now move to item Z11. Item Z11, resolution urging the United States Congress to enact the Energy Innovation and Carbon uh, Dividend Act of 2021. This item was recommended by the Community Development, Housing and General Government Committee with three in favor and one abstaining. This item was moved no consideration at the May 16th, 2022 City Council meeting. Council members, as you know, there's an active motion on this and typically on no consideration, we don't discuss it. So I would uh, call for a vote. All those in favor of this motion, please vote yes. Anyone opposed, vote no. Mr. Mayor, we don't have anything on our It's not screen. coming up, uh, Sandy. Do we, have a, do we need a motion and second? Motion, a motion? No. We already got a motion on the table. There's already a motion on the floor. Just need a vote. It's going to come up. It's coming. Who made the motion last time? There it is. There go. It's coming. Okay. Motion passes seven in favor, one opposed. Councilman Clark voting in the negative. Thank you. And now item Z12. Item Z12, Mayor Joins recommendation for reappointment to the City County Utility Commission, Yvonne H. Hines, terms expiring June 2027. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? All in favor of this motion, please vote yes. Anyone opposed, vote no. And that is unanimous. Thank you very much. 
Uh, Council members, I'd just uh, like to take a moment and just say that I did issue a press advisory this afternoon after discussing with, with some of you as well, just making a very strong suggestion that our citizens uh, consider wearing a mask inside, particularly when they're in meetings with large numbers of individuals or in closed quarters. And also suggesting, of course, that if you're not vaccinated, then now would be a good time to get vaccinated, or if you've been vaccinated, to get boosted. So uh, that's going out today, and uh, just wanted to emphasize that again. Any other, uh, Councilman Scipio? Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor and, and council members. I want to thank all of you for coming out on Saturday to the ribbon cutting of our Winston Lake uh, Park, our new shelter and the fishing pier, and all of the residents who've come out. We want more to come and use that wonderful park. And I thank you to the Recreation Center, I mean the Recreation staff and their department for an excellent job. Uh, for the ribbon cutting as well as for our flight festival, which was a wonderful success. And uh, I also want to recognize our marketing department that covered both of those events in a very well done way. Thank you. Thank you, Customer Scipio. Congratulations that both of the events were, were wonderful. Customers, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Motion second. second to adjourn. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? We are adjourned.